Snipers don't typically advertise their presence on the battlefield. This car was the height site of the infamous South Armagh Sniper, who were part of the IRA and ran a sniping campaign against the British Army from 1990 to 1997. For the most part, military snipers could easily spend 24 to 72 hours sitting in the hide anywhere, in the woods or in buildings. But how this US Army soldier became a hero after surviving a sniper shot? Why military snipers don't typically go for headshots and why their pants don't have zippers? How the rotation of Earth can make snipers miss their shot? And how in today's warfare, drones have already replaced snipers by large is not what you think. On July 2, 2005, an Iraqi insurgent sniper shot the US Army Private First Class Stephen Chitterer, while his sniper's companion were recording the whole ordeal with a camera. Chitterer took a shot to the chest, but was lucky because he was wearing his body armor. He scrambled over and took cover behind a Humvee. Processing what had just happened, he starts pointing toward the direction where he thinks the shot came from, and he was right. Within seconds, two vehicles started driving toward the sniper, who was hiding inside a van with two other men. They start driving away while being chased by the Humvees, which at some point started shooting at the van and injured the sniper, who then set off on foot. Uh, we ended up finding a blood trail from uh, the wounds that he had received, followed that through a few homes. And then, after a few minutes... I jumped over the wall after him, just ran up, grabbed him, dragged him out in the yard, patted him down, make sure he didn't have anything else on him. But what happened next was amazing. I'm a medic, it's my job. It doesn't matter, friend or foe, as soon as he's put down his weapons, I gotta treat him. So. Chitterer might be the only medic ever to have had the opportunity to help the sniper who had shot him in the chest. Uh, to be truthful, no, I don't feel like a hero. I mean, I'm a soldier. I got shot, I reacted, covered my lane, went got him, turned him in, and that's what... Aside from special cases, like the snipers who visibly patrolled the roof of the White House as a deterrent, snipers do their best not to be visible, even if they're right in front of you, and that's regardless of the surrounding environment. Here's a test. Can you spot the sniper? It's actually a sniper team made up of a sniper and a spotter. Even though snipers are outstanding marksmen, there is no guarantee that they would hit their target on the first try. Positively identify my target. Determine hold. Check my cosine indicator. Original elevation. Eye relief. Refine aim. Adjust power. Parallax. and mill. Steady breathing. Check for scope shadow. Trigger control. Watch for trace. Call splash. Through. Strike or trace. Recoil. Assess and evaluate the impact. Call my shot. What's in front of and behind my target? Send it. Shooter ready. On a clear day with no wind, a sniper would most likely hit a target that's up to a thousand yards away on the first try. And if it's a miss, the splash of the round, which is where the round has landed in relation to the target, would give clues to the adjustments needed for the next shot. The spotter would give quick, concise and accurate feedback so the sniper can make the adjustment and send it again. Alright, I want you to raise it up a mil and a quarter mil left. Re-engage. Got him. But why would the sniper listen to the spotter? Isn't the sniper the guy? Okay, the spotter is, is the more experienced of the two. There, there's a lot of... People think the sniper does everything. The shooter, the one that pulls the trigger is the one that that knows everything. That's not true. The spotter is the more experienced. He's the one right. that's doing all the math, all the calculations for when, um, what the shooter's corrections need to be. And really, the rounds in the shooter's weapon are the spotters. He's going to tell the shooter exactly what to do and when to do it. The biggest variable that impacts the accuracy of a shot is crosswind. Spotters commonly use a wind meter to measure the speed and direction of the wind at their location. But the wind could be gusty and have different speeds between the spotter and the target, which complicates things. Another important factor is gravity. As the bullet flies toward the target, it is constantly pulled down by gravity. Basically, the bullet follows an arc not a straight line. The farther away from the target, the higher above the target you have to aim. Typically, all the adjustments are made by tuning the elevation and windage knobs, and then lining up the target with the center of the crosshairs in the scope. But if the sniper has already missed the first shot, they need to act quickly, or the target may escape. 
so snipers may just hold over the crosshairs off target and use the fine measurement lines on the crosshairs to make the adjustments instead. Aside from gravity, the rotation of Earth also impacts the trajectory of the bullet. This is known as the Coriolis effect. The Earth rotates from west to east, and once the bullet leaves the barrel of the gun, the Earth rotates out from underneath the bullet. So if you're shooting west, your target is going to rotate up and toward you, and this causes the bullets to hit lower than expected. If you're facing east, the target is going to be dropping down, which is going to cause the bullet to hit higher than anticipated. This is why flat earthers don't make good snipers. And if you want to be a sniper without having to do complicated mathematics, you should try Warpath Ace Shooter, the sponsor of this video. Warpath Ace Shooter combines the thrill of being a sniper with real-time strategy gameplay right on your mobile device. As a top-notch sniper, for every mission you require a different type of firearm. Feel the pounding of your heartbeat and the weight of the recoil as you line up and take your shot. You'll also have access to an arsenal of assault rifles and submachine guns that you can swap out when you get up close and personal in close quarters firefight levels. In the face of an ever-changing battlefield, you'll need to adapt your strategy and produce resources, build up your base and get your units ready for battle. You can join an alliance or embark on a solo mission. The choice is yours. Employ long-range units, combined arms tactics and air superiority to counter anything the enemy throws at you. What's great is that you don't lose your resources if you're defeated, so you'll never be out of the fight. There is also a fun and easy minigame to win valuable physical rewards. With just a single click, you can try the Tank Tower 2 minigame. And of course, the higher your stack, the better the physical rewards that you get. So click the link below to play Warpath and use the code SNIPER24 to get in-game resources and test your courage and tactics among the over 30 million commanders that have already downloaded the game. Aim your rifle, be the savior of the battlefield. To properly account for the impact of the wind, gravity, and the Coriolis effect, knowing the exact distance to the target is crucial. To give you an idea, if the target was 870 yards away, but the spotter incorrectly estimated the distance as 760 yards, the bullet would hit the target 8 inches lower than expected, which can easily miss the target. This is why spotters use laser rangefinders, which accurately calculate the distance by sending a laser pulse in a narrow beam toward the target and measuring the time taken by the pulse to be reflected off the target and returned to the sender. Consumer-grade rangefinders may work up to 100 yards or so, whereas handheld military rangefinders operate at ranges of 1.2 to 15 miles and are combined with monoculars or binoculars. The more powerful rangefinders are normally installed on a tripod and could see up to 25 miles away, according to Wikipedia. On that note, the world record for the longest sniper kill was broken in November 2023 by a 58-year-old Ukrainian sniper Vyacheslav Kowalski when he shot a Russian soldier from a distance of 2.3 miles. That's greater than the length of two Brooklyn bridges in a row, and the bullet would have traveled for almost 9 seconds. And to prove this claim, this video was made public. While a sniper is holding the rifle, each breath and the actual pull of the trigger slightly moves the whole system. This is known as breathing control and trigger control. These tiny changes are amplified as the distance to the target increases, to the point that even a heartbeat can impact the accuracy of the shot. This is why snipers need to calm down to reduce their heartbeat so they can pull the trigger in between heartbeats. In fact, National Geographic once brought a sniper in and measured the exact time that he pulled the trigger, which was bang on in the middle, just like his shot. By the way, military snipers generally do not go for headshots. Think about it, heads are small and they move around a lot, making them a difficult target, especially from longer distances. The target of a military sniper is most likely more than 330 yards away. So they instead aim for the center mass, which is the upper portion of the chest, and that gives them a larger target and a higher kill probability. Police snipers, on the other hand, generally shoot at much shorter distances and may attempt a more precise shot at a particular body part, like the head, especially if the target is hiding behind a hostage. Hitting a moving target is much more complicated than hitting a stationary target. 
And that's where these robots come into the picture. They can tell where each round hit and can communicate to the shooter whether or not it was effective in killing the target. Now take all these factors into account and just imagine how much more challenging it would be to hit these moving targets from a moving helicopter. So how do aerial snipers manage to hit these targets? For stability, aerial snipers place their rifle on an X-harness or a sling, which helps absorb the vibrations of the helicopter. But even then, aerial snipers typically don't engage with targets that are more than 220 yards away, compared to ground snipers who could engage at distances of over a thousand yards. It is possible to hover in place and take a shot, but that makes the helicopter a much more vulnerable target for counterattacks. This is why sometimes using a machine gun on a moving helicopter is preferred to sniping. The helicopter pilot, who also acts as a spotter, plays an important role in keeping the bird stable and positioning it so that the sniper can take a better shot. But on the ground, a sniper's greatest asset is not their weapon. Rather, it's their ability to stay hidden. After all, a sniper who's found is more often than not a dead sniper, which is why they prefer to dress up for the occasion. This is a ghillie suit, and it's the primary article of clothing that snipers use for concealment. But the ghillie suit itself is not the camouflage. Snipers need to first veg up, which means attaching branches, leaves, or other things to the ghillie suit in order to break up the five curves on the human body that are recognizable to the eye, sides of the neck connecting to the shoulders, armpits, and the groin. According to some snipers, vegging up can be dirty and itchy. Of course, the veg up varies according to the terrain. For example, in dry grassland, the sniper will typically wear a ghillie suit covered in dead grass. The clothing that a sniper wears also has some unique features. And no, they don't buy all their supplies and clothing from Target. For example, the fly on sniper pants is not made of a zipper or velcro. Because of all the crawling that snipers need to do, dirt and debris can get stuck in zippers and velcro, making them unusable. Imagine, you've been hiding for hours and now you want to quietly relieve yourself. The last thing you want is a stuck zipper. Which is why sniper pants have buttons instead. And just like doctors without borders, these are snipers without diapers. That luxury is reserved for astronauts. Cordura 500 fabric is sewn in the front of clothing, which not only protects the body against rot and mildew, but it's also quite abrasion resistant. Painting the face with colors that blend in with the environment and also vegging up the rifle are other important aspects of concealment. But the toughest part of a sniper's job is yet to come. One of the most difficult aspects of the sniper training course is stalking. Snipers have to learn to move slowly, patiently and methodically for a stealthy approach toward their target. During the stalking portion of the training, trainees spend a couple of hours moving at a snail's pace through a wooded area, with the goal of sneaking up and taking a shot at their instructors. The instructors, on the other hand, are looking for the trainees, hoping to find them first. During combat, after spending days crawling, climbing, stinking, getting scratched and bit by bugs, the sniper arrives at their height site where they remain concealed until they have to take action. Even though shooting at targets is just one part of a sniper's role, it's the only one that's highlighted in movies. In reality, snipers play an arguably even more critical role, reconnaissance, which is about 90% of what they do. If a sniper can get within shooting distance from their target, they can also observe the enemy and their movements. That information can then be sent back to orchestrate artillery fire or an airstrike. The sniper can then report back whether or not the target was hit effectively. This is why, aside from marksmanship, observation and intelligence gathering, survival skills and land navigation are things that snipers need to excel at. The key to success is teamwork between the spotter and the sniper. But not everyone is made for this job. 
The qualification course at the Army Sniper School in Fort Benning, Georgia is seven weeks long, where any military branch or federal agency can send their candidates. And because in 2015, the U.S. military opened all combat jobs to women, Sergeant Missielle Hay became the very first U.S. Army active duty female sniper after graduating in November 2023. According to the instructors at Fort Benning, only four out of ten candidates make it through the course. In many ways, the psychological impact imposed by snipers is quite similar to those of landmines and IEDs. Just like booby traps, snipers pose a constant threat with a high per-event lethality and it's quite difficult for the other side to strike back at them. In fact, extensive use of sniper tactics can be used to induce constant stress and fear in opposing forces, making them afraid to move about. I don't think it's controversial to say that it takes a special kind of person to become a sniper. I'm not saying they don't have feelings, but the running joke is that the first thing a sniper feels after pulling the trigger is recoil. That said, there is a very dangerous side to this job. If captured by the enemy, snipers are more likely to be mistreated compared to non-snipers. The rationale is that ordinary soldiers shoot at each other at equal opportunity, while snipers have a relatively low risk of receiving retaliation. This is why snipers who find themselves in dangerous situations try to get rid of their ghillie suit and rifle, so if captured, they could try and hide their identity. But how do you catch a sniper? And what could be done to make snipers less effective? High-value targets is what snipers are usually after. So as a passive countermeasure, officers remove their rank insignia from their battle uniforms or use subdued insignia which is more difficult to identify. In addition, avoiding exaggerated saluting in the open or even setting up no-salute zones means snipers have a lesser chance of identifying higher-ranking officers. Examples of active countermeasures include using your own snipers against the enemy snipers. After all, it takes one to no one. The use of canine units is also popular, which had been very successful during the Vietnam War. To replace a sniper, you don't necessarily need a sophisticated, rifle-carrying drone that can take precision shots from the sky. Drones have already proven extremely effective in the Ukraine war. They can both drop munition on enemy positions and provide reconnaissance to help adjust artillery shots. Drones have in fact made the job much more difficult for snipers, since drones equipped with thermal cameras can expose even well-camouflaged snipers, as their body heat is likely to expose them. 